1500 doctors leave Pakistan every year because of three key reasons poor working conditions low salary and insecurity at work however i would like to also discuss this in the balance of how many doctors here in australia us and uk eventually leave medicine altogether in the long run due to stress and burnout so the debate and discourse is going to be about is leaving pakistan more like leaving bad medicine but eventually leaving medicine altogether here in the western countries but then finally is it worth the sacrifice of leaving your own country and the loved ones hello and welcome my name is dr rizwan qureshi and i'm a consultant in emergency medicine here in sydney australia i left pakistan 20 years ago after graduating as a junior medical doctor from dao medical college which is one of the most prestigious medical universities now and the state paid for my education i literally became doctor for free and for that i'm forever in debt to my country but 20 years later when i reflect on the decision of leaving pakistan is by looking at the situation in pakistan now i believe i made a right choice i left pakistan as a junior medical officer which is when majority of the doctors leave but lately i've seen doctors migrating at every stage interns residents even consultants and gps but i want this conversation to be unbiased and hence i'm going to talk through factual information i would like to break down this conversation into where do all the migrant doctors go why do migrant doctors leave in the first place and my personal top 10 reason for leaving pakistan i'm also going to talk about physician stress burnout in the us and uk and finally i'm going to discuss all of these factors concluding my discussions where do we all go well 56% of migrant doctors from developing countries end up in the us uk and australia and canada out of these 56% imgs 45% of these doctors are from india Pakistan and Philippines so it is not a unique problem to Pakistan next question why do doctors leave in 2002 right when i left pakistan there was a survey conducted at multiple teaching hospitals of karachi this survey was organized by community medicine department of a khan university hospital 180 doctors were surveyed 68% of the doctors working at these teaching hospitals of karachi had poor satisfaction level for workplace characteristics poor workload poor salary and lack of security leading to higher levels of job stress 12 years later there was another study conducted by college of physicians and surgeons of pakistan a total of 240 medical students participated in this study 54% wanted to go abroad with 66% choosing united states as their being favorite destination 94% doctors blamed a weak healthcare system 88% blamed inadequate salary and 93% felt insecure at work and 78% also blamed religious intolerance which is increasing day by day and then in september 2022 another study exploring reasons of brain drain was published in journal of ayub medical college in abbottabad they specifically did a proper study with 201 ayub medical college medical graduates and found that 63% of the medical graduates wanted to migrate and further 71.6% would immigrate eventually if given an opportunity for them uk was a preferred destination and top two reasons to leave were poor working conditions and salary the only reason which was holding them back was because of family commitment and costly exams overseas my personal reasons to leave pakistan i love my country its culture and the day that i had an admission to dao medical college in karachi back in 1996 it was one of the most happiest days of my life i remember during one surgical shift which was an on call shift i had four gunshot wound patients three laparotomies plus a busy ward day and i assisted in all of those operations working for 30 plus hours straight and actually i felt good about it that i was able to make some difference also during my medical ward internship i worked 12 hour shift straight for 7 days in a row learning was great i loved every moment of it and i got along very well with all my seniors despite working long hours and little salary and i believe the major reason for this phase was that i and other interns like me did not have any financial liabilities or obligations of families or anything else our parents were supporting us in every way possible we also had some really good and keen professors who influence further interest in medicine but then gradually towards the end of my house job or internship every house officer was either busy in studying for fcps part 1 or usmle or plabs exam as if everything has suddenly become serious now the fun was out and reality is slowly sinking in also i saw few rmos and registrar who were overworked they were underpaid they were unable to pass their fcps exam and that made them depressed they were financially dependent on their parents that made them even more depressed they were working in private gp clinics while doing post graduate training and trying to pass the fcps exam and also trying to support their families so that fundamental concept of serving humanity at a cost of personal well-being 
just did not sink in with me as I knew that it's not sustainable. Just as I graduated back in November 2001, which is when the world had just witnessed 9-11. Yes, US and other NATO countries had declared war on terror and our president had promised allegiance to this war. A war that lasted 22 years and deteriorated the socioeconomic conditions of that country even further. In my mind as a young doctor, I quickly realized the only way out of this mess is to leave Pakistan as soon as possible. So I'll share my 10 reasons that influenced me to leave Pakistan and a little disclaimer. These reasons are my reasons and by no means to influence your career progress journey. System. I was not happy with the hospital system, both public and private. Overall organization and infrastructure appeared tired and dated. Pakistan spends 1.9% of the total budget on health compared to 2.9% in India and 5.9% in Bangladesh. And compared that to in Australia is about 18.5% of Australian budget is dedicated towards health. The hospitals were overcrowded, the wards were dirty and full of filth and often were very smelly. I did my house job in civil hospital Karachi. The medical and surgical wards, there was often no electricity, water and the stairs and corridors were dark and gloomy. I remember during my medical ward posting, I collected money to purchase a water tank to be put in male RMO room for basic hygiene needs. While initially it was okay, but to stay and work in this environment for a long time, it was just not good for my own well-being. Number two, professionalism. Medical training and professionalism was non-existent. Senior doctors and professors would often come late and leave early. People would be absent and sick and things would get delayed for no specific reason at all. There was little accountability if things would go wrong or an, any mishap would happen. There's also some very questionable and unethical partnership between the pharmaceutical companies and some doctors, which raises the cost of certain medications in a poor country. And for me, at an individual level, there was just no positive engagement with seniors. When I visited Ahan University Hospital, which had nice, bright, open plan architecture, lawns, and sense of space, for a moment when I was there, I really wished I could be in that training system. But then I thought I would still be at a disposition of College of Physicians and Surgeons of Pakistan, long working hours and very little social life as was the feedback from the trainees working there. And the process was very similar to the rest of the country where the investment in health was extremely limited. It was just not possible for me to see myself train in that non-professional system. Number three, herd mentality. We had about 500 medical students in our batch and those who were focused towards USMLE did their step one in the final layer of medicine and they did not even bother to do their house job. Those who were doing the internship were very focused towards PLAB, were either booking their dates or had their dates already booked in. There were very few people in my class or close circles who wanted to stay back and do postgraduate training. So it became very clear that we're all in a bit of a hurry. To become a part of that rat race without much thinking, the statistic was actually show that 33% of the young doctors would immediately leave passing these licensing exams. Number four, money. We got paid a salary of rupees 3000 per month during our house job. And even 20 years ago, it was not enough to pay for rent, fuel, groceries or bills, even for a single person. I was teaching medical tuitions and stay afloat, mainly to have some savings for exams, courses and keeping general life going on with the help of my parents. When I did my first year of RMO ship in a private hospital, I was paid a salary of 10,000 per month. That was considered a good salary. The salary of a proper trainee at that time in a public hospital or in even Ahan University Hospital was about 30,000 to 40,000 rupees per month, which could go and increase up to 80,000 rupees per month for a very senior registrar level. But the working hours were 80 hours, 90 hours per week, which I don't think it's sustainable, even if you're passionate about learning and training in medicine. Ambition and ideals. Now, one thing that inspires junior doctors is senior doctors and consultants. Their conduct, their mannerism, and above all, their financial stability, the car that they drive, the house that they live in. And also, they must be foreign qualified and they have got a good private practice to display it all. I wanted to be like them. The only way to become like them is to follow in their footsteps. So either going to do PLAB to go and train in the UK or USMD to go and train in the US. Training. The clinical postgraduate training is based on three key factors. Well-resourced hospital providing modern facilities to the patients, good training program supervised by dedicated supervisor and close clinical support and mentorship to the trainee doctors by supervisor. 
in Pakistan, the opportunities were very limited. And with the passage of time, the conditions deteriorated even further. Also, training does not have to be punishment. A trainee doctor must have a well-paid job. He must also have leaves and study opportunity. There was no seamless integration of landing yourself into a training job. This was particularly depressing for younger generation, especially after the house job or internship. They have no way to go for further training apart from working in small private hospitals or just preparing for FCPS part one or licensing exam is waiting endlessly for opportunities. Here in the UK, US and Australia, there are more doctors in training than in private jobs. Every one of the Australian graduates are guaranteed at least three to four years of resident level training before proceeding to much more advanced and specialist training. Number seven, safety. I remember even as a house affair, almost on a daily basis, there were arguments, verbal altercation between staff, between patients and relatives. There were even at times physical fights and assault that would happen to the doctors and other staff members. It is as if you were never working in a safe environment, either if you're working in public system or a private system. For any mishap, junior doctors are left to deal with the situation themselves. There's no training provided how to deal or communicate with largely illiterate population. I even remember once there was a mishap at a surgical ward and the professor advised the junior doctor to take a leave to avoid any backlash from the patients or relatives. Also, in the name of religion, so many doctors have lost their lives working in their clinics and that growing religious intolerance is still rife in Pakistan. Nepotism. The other issue that was quickly evident that in government or public sector, one has to be influential to get the job. There was clearly no merit and this nepotism just because of the political affiliation, it created a culture and environment that destroyed talent. And trust me, if somebody had talent or ideas, the corrupt system would ensure that the person is never gets his final say. Number nine, family. Whatever one does, there's a goal to improve your own life and well-being, and then to improve the life and quality one closely related to you. It is impossible to support your family decently from, from the point of view of school fee, house rent, just by yourself. One has to almost certainly do multiple jobs like private work or GP jobs. For me, coming from a middle class family, my goals was to have a balanced life, and this seemed impossible in that environment. Number 10, the future. Now let's just assume for sake of argument that I accepted everything, every limitation in the system, the poor salary, long working hours, the filth, the lack of training, etc. I'm happy with that. Even if I would have passed the FCPS exams, looking at my senior who had passed the FCPS exam, nothing much changed in their life. Their hustle was now on a different level, trying to establish a private practice. Uh, here in the West, once you pass the fellowship exam, you're able to apply for senior level positions. You can locum independently. You can earn more while trying try to establish your private practice. It appeared in Pakistan, I would still need someone senior to take me under his wings, be his assistant or a slave for a number of years doing odd jobs till I establish my own private work. Let's talk a little bit of offsetting. Physician stress, burnout in the US and UK and in Australia. Especially after the pandemic, there has been increasing demand for healthcare workers. In US alone, 58% of the physician have a feeling of burnout. 68% have reported it has adversely affected their relationship, high rates of divorce, and the children not connecting with them. And 54% of the physician verify that their personal lives are actually affected on daily basis. And this burnout seems to be demand of work. The physicians in the US live in a constant fear of complaints and being sued. In the UK, where the system is largely public, the doctors are going on strike for their pay rises and poor working condition. They're moving to private sector or migrating to Australia, New Zealand and other countries for better salary and better working condition. The publicly funded NHS system has been abused and it seems to be crumbling down and the doctors and nurses have no option but to either keep on working in that system or go back to the countries where they came from. And for Pakistanis, it's just not possible to go back to Pakistan because they're never going to adjust back. In Australia, where the health system is both public and private, the conditions are a little bit better because of small population and better salaries. It is predicted by about 2030, one in four doctors in Australia will be migrant doctors. The junior doctors in particular in Australia, there's no trend of taking 
CLAB or USMLE or any other exam. Just a small number of people may do, you know, USMLE for the adventure sake. Doctors diversify. When they're going through burnout, they start to go into novel practices. They may go into teaching, education, further train in any other health or non-health industries. I've seen doctors mix their private and public work, working only 30 hours per week. Some doctors maintain other hobbies, traveling and locoming for work, where it gives them freedom and chance to meet new people, hence slowing this burnout or even eliminating it. So my conclusion, I believe my decision to leave Pakistan was absolutely correct. Looking at the circumstances now with the deteriorating health system, rising inflation, and even more established doctors seem to be struggling at the very front end of living conditions, financial and security wise, things have deteriorated further. My advice to all the junior doctors in Pakistan, male or female, is to leave the country for better personal growth, training and future of your family. And this has been the case for all the people before you for the past 50 years, when the doctors in Pakistan had freely migrated to the US and UK and Middle Eastern countries, and now coming to Australia and other countries like Malaysia, Singapore, even Brunei. Our last saving grace would be an unfortunate compromise of actually being able to help Pakistan through remittances and taxes. In the balance of things, even though medical life in the US, UK and Australia might be busy and associated with burnout rates, there are mechanisms here to diversify yourselves, to have leave, holidays and work in a good and safe environment. When you migrate, you do it for yourself and your family. And there's another science and steps to sustain the migration challenges, perhaps a topic for another video. Please share your comments as I'd love to hear about your feedback and insights. Take care of yourself and look after each other. Goodbye.